Hey, everybody. Let's talk a little bit about microplastics. This is something that I'm interested in um, recently, just, uh, just because sometimes, you know, nutrition and exercise is great, and that's all I talk about. But it is important to also pay attention to environmental toxins, because they do play a major role in all kinds of diseases, and not just full-blown diseases, but just overall quality of your life. So if you want to maximize energy, be, be a peak performer, all that kind of stuff, it's not enough to just focus on, you know, your sleep, your exercise, and your diet. We also want to pay attention to environmental toxins like microplastics. So this is an article from Greenpeace, um, and they uh, talk here about how Italian um, researchers discovered tiny plastic particles, that's right, in fruits and vegetables like carrots, lettuce, apples, and pears. As a matter of fact, apples had one of the highest microplastic counts in fruit with an average of 195,500 plastic particles per gram. Pears were pretty close. Even broccoli and carrots were, um, they were actually, actually broccoli and carrots were the most contaminated vegetables, averaging more than 100,000 plastic particles per gram. Um, also, uh, the roots of lettuce and wheat plants have been reported to be contaminated. And so every time you're taking a bite of an apple, you're almost certainly consuming microplastics along with it. Another potential source would be salt. So this is another reason why you don't wanna get the regular table salt, the generic brands, you want to go for Himalayan pink salt or Redmond's real salt. They're both very similar in that they come from um, ancient um, areas that were, that aren't touched by modern pollution. The only difference between them really is geography where you get them. So they're, it's either called Himalayan pink salt or Redmond's real salt. And seafood has been shown to be contaminated, specifically this um, fish that they studied, flathead gray mullet. Um, so, yeah. How does the plastic enter the food chain? Basically, from all the plastic that we're using, it eventually decomposes and breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces, but you can't really filter it out. Um, it's, it's too small to... Um, to be uh, filtered out. And so that's why it seeps into our groundwater and then microplankton organisms consume it. And then it builds up um, when bigger fish eat the um, plankton, et cetera. And that's how it finds its way into our food chain. So there you go. Another reason why we should be more proactive, paying attention to um, how we're affecting our environment and also on a personal level, paying attention to our exposure to environmental toxins. I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell icon so YouTube alerts you every time I post a new video. And I'll see you in the next one.